Pastor Free here from Christ the Lord Lutheran Church and School. Uh, over the next couple weeks, I hope you will join me as we go through a series all about how Jesus changes lives. Uh, you won't want to miss these short but revealing messages from God's Word that really will change your life. Today's topic is going to be a bit of a difficult one as we go through this series. Uh, it stems from a question that I was recently asked uh, from a member of our congregation. The question was this, Pastor, what do I say to my friends who think that I hate homosexuals? If you didn't notice, it's, it's Pride Month, a month when lots of people and companies have chosen to express their support for the LGBTQ plus community. And it's kind of a hard month for us as Christians to navigate, but I don't think it needs to be. God's word has always been clear on the issue of homosexuality, sexual preference, sexual identity, that sort of thing. Uh, in the book of Mark, Jesus, he looked back at God's original intent for marriage and was clear that marriage is to be between a man and a woman. Paul, in the book of Romans and in his first letter to the Corinthians, lists homosexuality as a sin to avoid. So what are we to do in a society that would rather embrace what God warns us to stay away from and, and to even condemn? Or, back to my original question, what does one say to their friends who think that they hate homosexuals? The answer to that question is actually really simple. Tell them you don't. You don't hate homosexuals. You don't hate others with different sexual identities. You love them. Understand this, the Christian faith, nor Christ himself, will ever ask you to do anything but love people whose sexual identity or preference is different from what God originally intended. But then you need to know what love means. True Christian love means willing and acting in a person's best interest, whatever the cost. And there's a right way and a wrong way to go about this. Uh, the right way involves a change of heart. It involves being more quick to spot and acknowledge those wrong things in yourself than the sin you see in someone else. Uh, don't forget this not-so-small miracle of your own forgiveness in Christ. Uh, be thankful that, by God's grace, you can slip in with the tax collectors and sinners and, and gather around Jesus. You have your own place there with the rest of the lost and found ones. What I'm trying to say is this. Have a little humility. God changed your heart. He brought you from sin to grace. He made you his own. You need him, and so does every other sinner out there, including those wrestling with their sin of, of homosexuality. And that's where we as Christians really stand apart. Society's message to the LGBTQ plus community is, is this is what you are. Uh, there is no other way for you. Accept it. Embrace it. And if you look closer at Paul's words in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9-11, to he is clear. That is what some of you were. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's quite a change, and not an easy one. It's a miracle, just like the miracle that worked faith in your own heart. But you know, some might call all of this hate, everything that I'm saying here, but... But they don't know our hearts. Our hearts are full of love. The love of God that wants all to be saved through Christ Jesus. And it is that love that changes hearts. It brings the sinner, every sinner, to the foot of the cross, to Jesus, who is not ashamed to be touched by former prostitutes or to sit and eat with broken sinners like me and like you. When you show those around you this Jesus, when you love like he loved, by God's grace, sinners will be washed. They will be declared not guilty. And their hearts, their hearts will change. God bless you as you have these difficult conversations. Amen.